These rewards are offered by private citizens and organizations, not the program producers or broadcaster. Each reward carries specific conditions which must be met before the reward can be collected. This program contains interviews with some of the actual people involved and uses recreations to dramatize the events. Charles Vossler is armed and dangerous. He burned down a house and is wanted for stealing two small boys. He's held them captive for the last three years. And they're his own sons. If you have seen this man and these children, you may be entitled to a $10,000 reward. Pirates have invaded Hollywood. They're in your neighborhood video store waiting to rip you off. There's a $15,000 reward for the conviction of video pirates. Rewards totaling more than $75,000 are about to be offered on Missing Rewards. A reward can be a tantalizing incentive to look through your attic, your storeroom, or even your mind for something of value to someone else. But for those offering the reward, it can mean a last hope, a final plea for help. When we return, the story of a mother desperately searching for her missing children, abducted by their own father. The bond between parent and child is perhaps the strongest, purest kind of love. But for Charles Vossler, his love for his children and his need for revenge have become horribly distorted. In 1986, he kidnapped his own children and keeps them in hiding to this day. Ruth and Charles Vossler had been married for five years. Their marriage had been deteriorating over the past few months. By the end of summer 1986, the couple agreed to a trial separation. Ruth was to move out of the house and live in an apartment, while Charles was to remain at the couple's home. Both would have equal time with the children until a final settlement could be reached. Just shortly before I left, Charlie was almost completely out of communication. He was not even coming home most days. Um, when he did come home, he, he didn't speak to me. Um, he is, his need to be the decision maker was absolute, uh, to the point where he didn't even need to make the appearance of consulting my opinion anymore. He would simply decide. Charlie announced that he had filed for divorce without consulting me at all. It was quite a shock. But his issue in the divorce didn't seem to be the custody of the children. He seemed to be much more concerned about assets, who had what possession, who had access to whose income. What started off as simply a divorce soon turned into a nightmare for Ruth Fossler. On October 9th, Charlie picked up the boys from my babysitter for an intended visit. He was to return them on Saturday. I see, Jay. wasn't sure when you were coming, so I didn't get their stuff oh, that's, together that's yet. that's all right. So. I'm only going to keep them for a couple of days. I can do that myself. Mrs. Yeah. Foster would like to know when you're going to bring them back. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Saturday, but I'll call her tomorrow. Okay. And, and you can leave anytime you want. All right. Okay? okay. Bye, guys. See, see you later. later. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, CJ, let's go. Let's go. Four days before the initial divorce hearing, Charles set into motion an elaborate plan to leave the state and take the children with him. Ruth would later find out that Charles had managed to remove all photographs of the children and other documents, such as letters, Christmas, and birthday cards. CJ, I haven't got time. Go get your stuff back like I told you to. Okay, what, what, what's going on? 
I just spoke to Susan. What are you doing? I'm shutting down the place, Frank, okay? No. Everybody's got to be out of here by this afternoon. What are you doing? It's nothing, okay? I no, it's, yes, it is about. something. We have people to worry about. You just can't leave. You gonna talk to me? No, I'm not. I haven't got time. I gotta close down everything. Do you understand that? Everything goes now. The sale of his real estate business was only part of a meticulous plan. In order to have funds available for his departure, Charles Vossler had systematically converted his assets to cash, assisted in large part by his parents. The morning Charles was to return the boys to Ruth, he called to say they were extending their visit. That was the last time Ruth ever heard from them. When I was unable to locate any sign of, of Charlie and the boys, I decided to go down to his place of business and find out from his secretary when he would return. At this point, I was very alarmed. When I got to the real estate office, it was approximately 11 o'clock in the morning when it should have been office booming. Instead, the door was locked. No one was there. Details of how well and how long Charles had planned the abduction began to emerge. Charles had systematically removed Ruth's name from all credit cards, accounts, and property holdings during the course of their marriage. He had bought and sold several pieces of property without her knowledge. At a hearing conducted on October 17, 1986, Ruth was granted temporary custody of the children. But Charles never returned to New Hampshire. Through our investigation, we found that Charles uh, had planned this abduction for a number of months, if not years, prior to the abduction. Um, he's very meticulous in his planning. He sits and he's apparently sat and thought about this extensively. Um, he's covered his base as well. In February 1987, the state of New Hampshire filed felony charges against Charles Bossler for intentional interference of custody. By April 1987, a federal warrant was issued. The FBI began following leads from local police, as well as national and local missing children groups. But Vossler was always a step ahead of them. Anonymous tips led to nine different states. It's gonna be okay, huh? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. What it's distinguishes this case from the other cases okay. that we work is the fact that Charles has access to money, which is making his life as a fugitive much easier. He can afford to buy things and, and keep himself uh, in clothes and stuff a lot easier than most of the cases that we work. In the summer of 1987, Ruth's father made a desperate attempt to reach the man who had abducted his grandchildren. My father, who was not well, had had two previous heart attacks, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He was very concerned about his missing grandchildren, that he would not know of their safe return by the time that he died. He contacted the local media and asked them to do a story wherein he talked to Charlie and asked him to have the children contact him. Yeah, I got a lot of hope for them. I got, got that we brought back what I probably would be here. That plea was carried both locally and nationally. Charlie never responded, and my father died a short time after that. Vossler has just 13 seconds to help find her children. 13 seconds of videotape of her two kids, Charles and Billy. The videotape was taken by a friend at a picnic two years ago, just before Ruth's husband Charles abducted the couple's children and disappeared. When he left, Charles Vossler took all the couple's money and recent photographs. That has made it difficult for Ruth to track him down, and it has left her with a few baby pictures and a videotape as the only mementos of her children. Charles Vossler had always been attracted to country life, and his tracks led investigators through many rural areas. He was also reported to be armed, 
and leading a survivalist existence, keeping his children at home and refusing to send them to school. On August 8, 1988, an anonymous caller later identified Charles as living in Stillwell, Oklahoma, under the alias of Charles Wilson. Ruth was notified by Child Find of America that someone had recognized CJ, her oldest son, from a missing child poster. Our office received an anonymous complaint that two children had been seen here in Adair County that had been reported missing. I think maybe their a poster with one of the children's pictures on it or something had been seen. Uh, at that time, uh, we called the proper authorities, probably the sheriff's office and the police station here. The FBI was notified. I was told that I needed to make preparations to pick up my children within 24 hours. That did not happen. Uh, after eight very long, agonizing days, uh, I found out that Charlie somehow had been tipped off. The tip in the form of a card allegedly placed in Vossler's post office box, warned him that the FBI was closing in on him. Get on it. Vossler burned his house to the ground, along with one of his vehicles. The fire destroyed any evidence that might have helped investigators in tracking him down. Charles disappeared with the children during the month of August 1988. Charles Vossler is still at large. The whereabouts of the two children and their abductor is unknown. My children have lived for three years on the run. It's time for it to stop. It's time for them to come home. Look carefully at the pictures of Charles Vossler and his children again. This is the first time they've been shown on national television. And remember, these pictures were taken three years ago. If you've seen these people, please call our 24-hour hotline and be advised. Police believe Vossler is armed and dangerous. The people offering rewards in the stories you've just seen are counting on you to come forward. If you have information, or if you're interested in obtaining a booklet about additional rewards, call our 24-hour hotline, 1-900-860-0860. Please take another look at Charles Vossler and his children, CJ and Billy. Remember, these pictures are three years old. There is a $10,000 reward for information leading to the safe return of the children to their mother. If you think you've rented a pirated video, report it. Your information could lead to the conviction of a video pirate and a $15,000 reward. And Kachina dolls like these may be worth as much as $10,000 each. I'm Stacy Keach. Join me next week for another episode of Missing Reward. See you then. Lodging for Missing Reward provided by the Chesterfield. Offering superlative accommodations in Century City, Beverly Hills. Distinctive rooms and impeccable service, the Chesterfield. Tomorrow at noon on Fox 29, the gorillas grapple for power in battle for the planet of the apes. Then stay tuned for Roger Moore in Sherlock Holmes in New York. And at 4, William Holden stars in The Blue Knight, a super lineup tomorrow on Fox 29. It's a bona fide hit, says the New York Post. Yeah,